Hello, welcome to my channel. Today we're looking at a uh, Jane Doe, unidentified female. She was found August 27th, 1978 in Finley Creek, Oregon, Union County. It says her estimated date of death was 1970 to 1975. Estimated age, 14 to 25 years old. Race unknown, listed as white by some sources. Sex female. Height 5'1 to 5'4, weight 114 to 140 pounds, light brown, sandy, or blonde hair. She was pregnant and likely in her 6th to 8th month of pregnancy. Um, halter bra, red Catalina pants, size 15, 16, possibly juniors, which may have been modified in length. Ankle high lace up shoes and remnants of clothing that consisted of red cloth, white cloth, and zippers. Unknown. Size 15, 16. That would have to be juniors. That would make it seem like she was younger, probably about 14 or so, wouldn't it? Because I know when I was 14, I think I wore I wore a size 3, 4 when I was 14 and that wasn't in juniors. I don't think it was, no, it was three, four adults. So, and 15, 16 would be um, size nine maybe back then. Uh, Cause I wore a 14, size 14 in junior boys pants. So girls pants. Wouldn't that be like a size nine or so in adults? So yeah, like an eight or a nine or a 10. So that would be, a, seems to me like she might be younger. I don't know. So the female's remains were discovered by hunters in a wooded area underneath a log on the side of a hill near Elgin, Oregon, about a hundred feet from a nearby road. The location is 18 miles from the Grand Oregon in near Finley Creek. The Jane Doe may not have been from the area she was located in, as no known missing person appeared to match her description. Authorities theorize she could have kept to herself or maintained a low profile if she had spent some time in the area. Some investigators considered the possibility that the teenager young woman may have fallen victory victim to Gary Leon Ridgway, who was known to dispose of bodies in Oregon. He was active between the early 1970s and 1990s. Others have suggested her case could be connected with the so-called Lewis Clark Valley murders that occurred in states such as Idaho, Washington, and possibly Illinois. The remains of the female and her unborn child were cremated the day after they were autopsied, although the current location of the cremains are unknown and there are current efforts to rediscover them with recent developments in the process of dna extraction and enrichment it is hoped that if her remains are located a usable profile could be obtained she is known as family creek jane doe so there we have that but yeah let's see Okay, so then we're going to look at some missing females. Okay, so, oh, and here's her on NamUs. And on NamUs, it says light brown to blonde hair. And it says that she is 5'2", 120 pounds. 5'2", 120 pounds. I was 5'4". Four, and I was 99 pounds and I wore a size 3, 4 but then when I gained a little bit of weight and I went up to a size 7, 8 in females I would wear a 14 in the boys and that was way back when because I'm really old um, so I would think that's possible. That's probably about right, but that would be the junior girls' clothes. That would be the, yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so it pretty much says the same thing. You can pause it to read it, but yeah, it just seems to me like she might be younger if she's still wearing. You know, the kids' clothes. Um, 
All right, so we have Lynn Dawn Culver, and she was only 12 years old, even though that says 14. I'm leaving her in here. She went missing um, from Pocatello, Idaho, 12 years old. She was about 5'2", 110 pounds. So she was missing. She left the school grounds at lunchtime, and she's not been seen since. Light brown and long hair. Hazel eyes. Okay, um, we have this young lady, Benita Gay Chamberlain. She's been missing since February 23rd, 1978 from Eugene, Oregon, Lane County. She was 5'5", five five, though, 120 pounds, 24 years old. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, and I'm not sure if her height is exact or if she had a driver's license and all that. So, um, she had just had a baby, allegedly, they said. She just had a newborn daughter who was born premature. So you can pause this and read it. So I really wanted to leave her in here because whenever I see that Jane Doe, I think of this woman, this young lady, and I'm thinking, well, she just had a baby, and she really looks very similar to her. And she went missing. So. I don't, I don't know if there's typos or or something's not quite right, but it really just, to me, she looks so much like her. And she went missing right about the same time. And one of them was pregnant, and one of them just had a baby, allegedly, and it was premature, and this baby's person's baby would have been due about that time. So it reminds me so much of her. Then we have Vicki Lynn Holler. She went missing in 1973. Uh, 24 years old, 5'1", 115 pounds, brown hair. So, like I said, and you can pause it and read it. She was seen getting into her car. It was a black Volkswagen Beetle, and it's got the license plate number. Um, at a parking lot. She was leaving work. Uh, it, it would now be called Macy's. What it was called back then was different. They thought she was headed home. They were concerned. Maybe she picked up a hitchhiker or something. They weren't sure. She planned to meet somebody at a party. Um, her car and her purse have never been recovered. So they think maybe Ted Bundy might have killed her. Okay, so, and then we have this young lady, Deborah Lee Tomlinson. She's been missing since October 15th, 1973, from Creswell, Oregon. She was 16 years old, 5'5", five five, 140 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes. Um, she ran away from home with another female team, teen whose identity is unknown. I can't believe no one's ever come forward to give the name of the other teenager that ran away with her. Okay, then there was Virginia Erickson. Now, she's too old. She's 32 years old, but I decided to leave her in here. She went missing from Sweet Home, Oregon, which is Lynn County. Her nickname was Jenny. She attended church on a regular basis. She played piano at the church. Supposedly, her parent, her supposedly her children went to church alone without her and her husband, who was going hunting. She was going to go with them, even though she would have been playing the piano and gone to church. Back then, people really didn't miss church, and women weren't really. I don't. I don't know. There wasn't. The women in my family that went to church didn't go hunting. It was a man's thing. We didn't go hunting. We didn't go fishing. The men did. So my 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 dad wasn't one of those who taught women how in the family how to drive, how to go fishing, um, how to go hunting, how to how to do any of that kind of thing. That was that was the men's thing, and the women's thing was going to church and cooking and cleaning and that kind of thing. So. Um, so then we have this young lady, and there's no photo of her. It says she's African American, so I don't think she would have light. I don't think she would have light brown blonde hair, but I'm leaving her in here anyway. She's five foot two, fourteen pounds, one hundred five foot two, 
14 years old and 115 pounds. And you can pause this and read it. She left her home. She may have been living in an apartment in Seattle area. No contact with family since 1972. Brown hair, brown eyes. And they have no idea what happened to her. And there is no photo. So that's a bummer. Uh, Georgie, Georgie Ann Hawkins, 1974, Seattle, Washington. She was 18 years old. She was 5'2 as well. Um, she disappeared from the University of Washington campus, June 11, 1974, brown hair, brown eyes. So, um, then we have Marla Jean Thomas, missing since 1974, Anna Cortez, Washington, 22 years old, 5'2", 140 pounds. Last seen December 11th, 1974, brown hair, blue eyes. There is a photo. There's not a lot of information. Lynn Brown. Um, yeah, she was 25 years old. She's been missing from Estacada, Oregon. 5'2", 110 pounds. Supposedly, she had her children for the day, and she was outside with them at the park, and they found the children, and it looked like somebody had shot them in the back of the head, and it says she had a history of mental illness and previously attempted suicide, brown hair, green eyes. I have problems with this because of the fact that most women would commit a crime like that indoors and not outside and I don't know the whole thing just bothers me and they've never found her body so I don't know and then I went and did a name and search for the exact five foot two and we have Denise Kathleen Anderson from Sacramento, California. She was 22 years old, 5'2 to 5'4, 120 to 125 pounds. Um, last seen at her apartment in the early morning hours by her roommates. She's not been seen or heard since. Brown hair, longer than shoulder length, straight hair, brown eyes. She's known to wear a wig, black, short hairstyle. Roommate stated this item was missing from the apartment let's see uh, lisa francine watson black african-american january 1972 14 years old five foot two 115 pounds she left the family home and may have been living oh didn't i already just read that one I'm pretty sure I did. I might have done that one twice. Yep, there it is. Okay, so we'll get rid of the second one. Sorry about that. Um, or if I have any other ones twice. Kathleen Edna Rogers. I tried to make sure I didn't, but. She was 16 years old, Oroville, California, 5'2", 130 pounds. She just says she was last seen at her home. There's really no other information. Brown hair, green eyes. So. Just went missing from her home. Peggy Ann Reed. Huh. They have a few photos. Santa Rosa, California. 15 years old. 5 foot 2, 100 to 110 pounds. Just says she was last seen 328 1974. It doesn't say where or what happened. Light brown shoulder length hair. Uh, long eyelashes. Wore glasses sometimes. Wow, they have a really good description of her clothing. Not the sizes, but the clothing she was wearing.
Oh, her shoes are a size six. Narrow. Wow. See, it sounds like she was really well loved. I wonder what happened to her. She may have hitchhiked. Then we have Carlene Brown, Rollins, Wyoming, 19 years old, 5 foot tall to 5 foot 3, 100 to 120 pounds. Um, she, she was last seen with her friend Christy Gross, age 19, while visiting the Little Bridges Rodeo in Rollins, Wyoming on July 4th, 1974. The skeletal remains of Christy Gross were found on October 27th, 1983, three miles south of Sinclair, Wyoming. She had red auburn hair, brown eyes, scars on left and right feet, both on big toes, freckles. Wow, so they just haven't found her remains. 19 years old. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that. She's Asian. She was 20 years old from Delaware. 5'2 to 5'3, 100 to 105 pounds. She's a native of Korea. She came to the United States in November 1974 with her American serviceman husband. She is missing under suspicious circumstances, and there's no paper trail for her. The Delaware State Police previously checked with immigration, and there's no record of her ever returning to Korea. Black hair and brown eyes. Did not own or have access to a vehicle. Well, wow. and here's the newspaper article. I'm going to click on this one. So. And then we have Nancy Perry Baird, missing from Layton, Utah, 23 years old. She was 5'2 to 5'3, 99 to 100 pounds. She's worked as a clerk for Fina Gas Station, where she was found to be missing. She was last seen by a patrol officer approximately 15 minutes before she disappeared. She was wearing shorts, a halter top, and a smock, smock all blue in color. The smock had a Fina Station logo. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Her purse and money were found behind the counter, and her car was parked at the station. Red to strawberry blonde hair, red auburn. Strawberry blonde, hazel eyes, small scars, blue shorts, blue halter top, and blue smock. Um, was small to wear a ruby. Was known to wear a small ruby ring on her pinky finger. This ring had a main ruby stone with two smaller rubies on each set in gold. Well, she looks similar to the Jane Doe, doesn't she? But it doesn't say anything about being pregnant or anything like that. Anyway, so those are the Jane Does I found. And if you have any information about any of these cases, please contact authorities, whether you gave them the information before years ago or it's hearsay because you're not going to court. You're just helping them to solve the case. You can let them know. If you don't know if it's accurate or if it's true, or if you just heard it from somebody that was friends of yours, um, just give them any information you have. Please feel free to leave comments. Don't forget to pray for their loved ones and their families. And have a great day. Bye-bye.